Hi, it's Wesley with 22 Zines, and today I'm sharing some of my recent thoughts on art, capitalism, and being an artist in a capitalist world. Uh, this has been sparked for me recently because Etsy recently announced that they would be raising the fees for sellers, the transaction fee that all sellers are required to pay, by one and a half uh, percent. Rather, it's not by one and a half percent. What the transaction fee was previously five percent, now it is going to be six and a half, which is quite a large increase, especially given that this is announced in the wake of some very record-breaking profits uh, that Etsy has made off of the backs of these creators as people are purchasing more things online due to the pandemic. And, um, you know, frankly, we were kind of trending that way anyway. So uh, naturally, many artists, including myself, are very upset by this because Etsy is already notorious for having rather high selling fees and very strict um, restrictions for sellers. Uh, in addition to the uh, soon to be six and a half percent cut that they take from the uh, price of each item. And, and by the way, I should say it's not from the price of each item. It is from the total amount, including shipping. Uh, if you are shipping through Etsy, which um, I believe that you may be required to ship through Etsy if it's over uh, $10 or if it's over a certain amount or over a certain weight. Um, I ship very small things and light things, zines, so I am allowed to get away with not providing uh, tracking information because I just send them with regular stamps and I can get away with not um, using the default Etsy shipping system because the zines that I sell are very inexpensive. But anyway, um, the shipping requirements and the shipping fees are are difficult, <laughs> to say the least, um, with Etsy. And uh, Etsy takes that 6.5% off the top of the total, including shipping, taxes, item costs, all of that stuff, um, as opposed to just the price of the item which sucks. And Etsy also um, charges a 40 cent uh, listing fee every for every item that is listed or every uh, the quantity of every item. So if I were to list 20 zines on uh, Etsy, then every single time that someone purchases one, Etsy charges me the baseline 40 cent listing fee. Um, that is obviously it's it's super annoying and ridiculous, um, but it is especially hard hitting for um, creators of cheap things. Um, obviously, when you're selling something for a hundred dollars, then forty cents, you know, it still eats in, it still affects it, but it's a much smaller percentage of the potential uh, profit that you get from selling it than. Uh, it is for me when I'm trying to sell zines for a dollar. And at some point, like, it just becomes impossible to sell an item for less than a certain amount, um, just purely because of the fee structures. Uh, I sell everything, I do my best to sell things just covering my base costs and planning slightly for the future. Um, it is structured in a way that I can do wholesale prices for zine distros. Um, but in general, like I am trying very hard to be a low or no profit, um, zine distributor <laughs> or zine seller, you know, selling my works for no or low profit, because that's something that's important to me. And so, um, I know that selling my zines for, uh, $2 versus $3, for some people, that dollar is going to make the difference. And for some people, uh, that means the difference between buying uh, two zines or buying three zines. You know, if it's $2, then they can buy three zines. And so why not give that option when my primary goal is to get the information out there? Um, I have a lot of uh, 
transitions that I'm I'm making with my own approach to selling art and sharing art and um and zines and and structures and you know the first of which uh, is getting off of Etsy and you know I already had another store platform but you know it's it's all very complicated um I don't mean any of this to say that you shouldn't support creators who are on Etsy because in many ways Etsy is um the mo one of the most recognizable things and so it's one of the easiest places for artists to um have their work discovered and then purchased uh i would suggest if possible if you do find something on etsy try to see if they have their own individual shop or if they have any other storefront look in the item description and look at the person's uh, shop profile to see if they link that anywhere because not only can you frequently get the item cheaper that way, but it means that the artist likely doesn't have to pay as many fees or such a high fee um, for selling it. Um, this is also not to say that Etsy is the only place that has high or obnoxious fees or that, you know, other places might not even be worse for some creators in some situations. Um... The point of all this is that this uh, this price increase, this fee increase, has brought to the forefront um, a struggle that I have had with art and with sharing art and potentially selling art uh, that I have had to look at a little more closely. Um, I promise I'll get to what I'm holding down here eventually. I kind of didn't think I'd have this much to say on it, but I've been... Uh, I've been holding a lot of this in and, and thinking about it a lot. Um, so another story about um, just my relationship with uh, selling art and with making art for sale and that sort of thing is um, that my grandmother in particular, um, she is not unique in this, uh, but she was the most prominent influence in, in sort of my life is that every time when I was growing up and especially when I heard hit a certain, um, a certain level, I suppose, uh, like a certain age and I had been doing things for a certain amount of time and I was showing more interest in, in making larger projects and, and sort of producing artwork more consistently then my grandma did encourage me to, sell my work and every time that I would work on something then she would as her way of complimenting it she would say you should sell this or you should finish this so that you could sell it and um that was coming from a place of love and that was coming from a a compliment where that is her way of saying this is good enough that people would buy it and this is and this is good enough that people would place value on it in um, sort of what she sees as the, you know, as an important part of that value is financial value. Uh, my grandmother was a concert pianist and she did a lot of freelance work. She did almost entirely freelance or contract work with that, um, where she was an accompanist for hire who would help, you know, help singers practice by playing the piano and working with them on pieces. Um, in preparation for a show. Uh, and she also worked with theater companies and opera companies um, as the pianist and during rehearsals. And so my grandma, as an artist, as a musical artist, her approach was um, one that many artists uh, pretty much have to take if you are going to uh, be making your primary income off of art, which is trying to find ways to monetize it as much as you can and um as consistently as you can and generally like it means having a relationship with art that um is one of monetization and and this is no shame no shade this is just this is the relationship that that happens there um and so that's where my grandmother was coming from was that that was her relationship with art and and skill and art making was one of being able to sell her sell her art and sell her her skills as a pianist um and so that's sort of where she was coming from when she was giving me advice or compliments or whatever was that she was trying to uh 
she was assuming that I would be in the same place as her. I'll put it that way. I was like, she was assuming that um, the way that I, the relationship that I had with art also um, would be or could be one of selling it and one uh, that was um, focused on, on, on how I could earn money from my art and from my, from my skills. And, uh, that is something that I realized relatively early on when, when exploring careers and things, that is something I realized I did not want to do. That is a relationship I did not want to have with art. Um, I went to an arts college for, um, a, a semester basically. And I realized in that time that I did not like art assignments. I did not like how, um, how it made me feel. I did not like creating anymore. Um, I broke down and cried the very first time that I had a professor who was making a big deal about, um, it was something like, an A means professional grade work. And I was feeling completely overwhelmed and just feeling like there was no way that I could possibly get an A in this class because I'm not making professional grade work yet because I'm a student. And, um, just because I'm, I'm not, I'm not there yet. And what does that mean? And how is that determined? And, and generally like it made, um, it made the creation process stressful and it made the creation process not fun anymore. And, um, although it is a perfectly valid career choice, and although this, uh, this does not happen for some artists, or although some artists, they feel this, but they push through anyway, because they want to, that's all fine. It, it wasn't the relationship that I wanted to have with art. And so that is when I sort of pivoted careers, and I'm very happy in the career that I have now of being a public librarian. Um, and maintaining art as sort of a separate passion, uh, a hobby, I suppose you'd call it. Um, and so that is where my general approach has been, is trying to move away from seeing art as something to be monetized, something to be sold, and as my skills to be... Um, valued monetarily. And recently, um, in the last few years, I think that I have strayed from that in quite a few ways. I, um, I feel like it's very tempting for me personally to, uh, want to sell my art almost as a means of getting it out there and as a means of sharing it as something valuable as opposed to just something I do. I don't know how else to say that, but sort of like in a world where value is determined by money, then if the thing that I'm doing isn't making money or if I am not putting a monetary value on it, then it feels in some way that the value is diminished, or at least that's, that is how, that is a mindset that's very easy to fall into. Um, and it is a mindset that I know that I don't want to have, and yet it keeps creeping up some ways when I'm thinking about, especially when I'm I'm trying to sell things online or when I'm trying to put my artwork online. Um, you know, it's one thing to try and cover costs, and I've try, been trying to focus on covering costs, but with all of these fee structures that are in place... Um, that becomes harder and harder and it, it turns into higher and higher prices. And it, um, it feels like it's almost not worth managing just for the sake of it. Um, I don't know if that makes any sense, but, but basically like, it's very difficult to exist in this sort of, um, structure in this sort of in the sort of world and still maintain the uh, relationship with art that I want to have. Um, yeah, <laughs> this is, this is almost, this is almost difficult because it's very, it's very sad. It's very, it's very tragic to me. I think that, um, 
that I have had such difficulty maintaining this relationship. Um, I almost feel like I have, I've let myself down or I've let myself stray in some way. Um, so, so that's part of it. A another part of it that I think is directly linked, although not, not exactly the same is, um, the creation of art for the sake of display, uh, in social media and for the sake of, of, I don't mean to say for the sake of popularity, but let me just, let me rephrase that as the relationship between art and social media. Um, the difficult thing there is that the goal, one of the goals that I have with my art is that I do want it to be seen because that is how I express myself. And in a way I want myself to be seen and I want myself to be known. And it does make me very happy when people observe or read or otherwise interact with my art. And of course there are some things that I see as more informational that I want to get information out there. Um, but either way, I think that that's something that's really important for me in the art creation, uh, process is, um, that's something that's, that's felt very fulfilling is to be able to, to get the information, get, get the artwork seen. Um, and in some ways that's part of why I have this YouTube channel. And, um, you know, it's taken me a little while to find the platforms that I am more or less comfortable with. And I've tried many platforms in many different, uh, respects. And I think that that's one of those things that I also want to remind myself that the relationship that I want to have with social media is an emphasis on the social aspect in a way that makes me comfortable and not in on an emphasis of a business aspect. I suppose that's the other thing. It's like, I've never wanted it to feel like I'm advertising. Um, I don't want to advertise my work because I feel like that serves the end goal of of treating art as a business, which is just, like I had said, not the relationship that I want to have with it. And yet it is very tempting to now see there are so many cool zinesters and cool zines that are happening on Instagram, for example. But Instagram is a platform that I don't really want to use. I'm not sure that I'm comfortable with. Um, Admittedly, I've never really tried to use it or to create content for it, but, you know, see, there's the problem, though, is just when I'm talking, I sort of say, create content for it, and it's like, that's not really what I want it to be. I want to share things that I've already created, um, and not feel like it's something that I need to, I need to, to keep up with for the sake of maintaining appearances or maintaining a business or, or any of this other stuff, um, and let me, let me also say like, none of these are unique problems and none of these are even unique ideas to me. Um, but I think that they, they perhaps play out subtly in ways that, especially for me, sort of sneak up even when ideologically I, I feel secure in my, in my beliefs in a way, or I feel secure in my ideas that I don't want my art to become focused on business. I want to maintain focus on sharing. Um, but it's almost like when, when you're existing in an environment that is not built for that, it means that you have to work extra hard to maintain your approach, to maintain your boundaries and to, um, to maintain the relationship that you want. I suppose, you could almost liken it to, um, for me, gender of like, <laughs> it's it like for me, um, it feels like I need to <laughs> work especially hard to, uh, maintain my, my assertion, I suppose, maintain my, my truth that I am a demi boy when people don't know what that is. The world is set up in a way that does not accommodate gender, um, variance, gender diversity, you know, it is a very, um, cis binary normative society. And, um, although 
it's very important to me. And although ideologically, I completely believe that the society should not be that way, you know, there are plenty of moments where someone misgenders me and it's like, well, I, I'm just not going to deal with this right now. And there are many times when, when I, I get misgendered somewhat consistently and, and, and I just can't deal with it. I mean, I just want to say that, like, this is me trying to be kind to myself. That's coming to, um, the sort of difficulties, you know, be, being affected by the difficulties of living in a very capitalist society that places the value of anything, not just art, but the value of anything on money, trying to live outside of that is difficult. And there's, it's okay. It's forgivable, um, to, to struggle with that. <laughs> Even if it's out of line with my ideas, it does not make me a hypocrite by any means to, um, to have difficulties and to have to re remind myself and reaffirm my values. Because really when you live in a, uh, an environment that doesn't, doesn't share or even allow your values in many ways, then it is something that you have to constantly reaffirm for yourself. And that is a lot of energy and that is a lot of work and that is very difficult. Um, so what I've done basically is I have tried to create this, this set of affirmations for myself or this, this reminder of what I want art to be for me, what I want the experience of sharing my art to be like, and, um, generally what I want my approach to be as something that I can remind myself of or return to if I'm ever unsure or if I'm ever, you know, feeling uncomfortable in any way with, with my art or how it's progressing, or if I'm, if I'm wondering what direction to, to take what, what, how to move forward, then this is sort of like, it's a set of affirmations, it's a goal, and it's a representation of my, um, of my beliefs, <laughs> basically. So these are sort of my inspiration pieces, uh, and I will show you what I came up with momentarily. This is, uh, one of my favorite zines, Anti-Capitalist Affirmations by Nick Moreno. I am sure I've talked about this before, and I will definitely talk about this again, which is similarly, it's a set of affirmations, um, that you can use to remind yourself of, um, when living in a capitalist world. And, uh, not all of these are related to art specifically, uh, but they're very important. And uh, here are a couple that I feel like are especially applicable to this situation and that I was inspired by. Uh, you're allowed to have hobbies and interests that enrich your life without selling the products from them, i.e. art, writing, and music. Hobbies are meant to give your life quality and joy, not monetary value. You're allowed to enjoy things just because you enjoy them. In a world that's built on side hustles, grinding, and hustling, you're allowed to like things without monetizing them. Um, very similarly to that is the idea of productivity, um, which is definitely tied up in this, I think, in, in, in pretty clear ways. So there are a few more in here. Your worth and your value exist outside of your paycheck slash wallet. Um, capitalism kills, kills, kill capitalism. So I was very inspired by anti-capitalist affirmations in, um, selecting some, some particular, um, affirmations <laughs> for myself. Uh, another one is actually a video by Molly Roberts. And, um, now I can't remember the exact title of it, but I will link the video below. And it is basically a video about being an art witch. And similarly, it's, you know, comprised of Molly Roberts reminding, uh, reminding themselves about what, is important, what is allowed, giving themselves permission to do things and, and reaffirming their values. And generally it is, it is very valuable. And, and I, I was very inspired by, by those as well. And this one is a flyer actually that I have sort of 
had in my life for a while now, and I can't remember where I originally found it. I found it digitally, and I have made it into a flyer. I've printed it on this pink paper, and I will frequently include it in envelopes and letters and zine packages and that sort of thing. And this was by Bread and Puppet Glover, Vermont, in 1984. And uh, I believe Bread and Puppet Glover was an, an art studio don't quote me on that. I, I need to look that up again. But basically, this, this flyer was written in 1984, and it is called the Why Cheap Art Manifesto. Um, and when I was first sort of constructing my um, the setups that I would use to share my zines and to sell my zines, this is sort of what I kept reminding myself of, um, that I wanted my art to be cheap for the purpose of sharing it. And, um, I'll just go ahead and read, <laughs> read this because I think that it's very, it's very important. People have been thinking too long that art is a privilege of the museums and the rich. Art is not business. It does not belong to banks and fancy investors. Art is food. You cannot eat it, but it feeds you. Art has to be cheap and available to everybody. It needs to be everywhere, because it is inside of the world. Art soothes pain. Art wakes up sleepers. Art fights against war and stupidity. Art sings hallelujah. Art is for kitchens. Art is like good bread. Art is like green trees. Art is like white clouds in the blue sky. Art is cheap. Hurrah. <laughs> so, this is what I have based my own arts manifesto upon. Um, both uh, the the message is uh, shared by this YG Art manifesto and also, as you will see, some of the formatting. <laughs> it is sort of a, a direct um, inspiration and, and modernization, I suppose, in in relation to this. So without further ado, this is my arts manifesto. It is a little longer than, uh, this is, you know, regular eight and a half by 11. And this one is, um, I think legal size is what it's called. So it's slightly taller, but anyway, I think I'll just go ahead and, and read it. Sorry. I won't be able to show the whole thing all at once. Um, here we go. Art is for humans, not algorithms. The drive to share is human. The drive to sell is capitalism. The desire to express is human. The desire to hustle is capitalism. Sharing, not selling. Share whenever possible. Art can't be felt through the kaleidoscopic veil of storefronts and advertising. Trust that art will reach those who need it. Heart is creation, not distribution. Make for the sake of yourself Share for the sake of art and community. You are granting others the privilege of witnessing you, not for the tastes of others or the tastes of their wallets. Art is magic. You cannot prove its power, but you can see it. You cannot see its power, but you can feel it. Artists are more powerful than the immortal gods. Not even the gods can create something that outlasts them. Art is experimental. I do not need a style people can label and sell. I transcend the limitations of my past creations. Art needs to take up space. There is no such thing as too much art. Art needs friends. Art is love, not profit. Art is creation, not consumption. Artists deserve money because with it they are free to create not because their work has monetary value. Monetary value is fake. Art's value is real. Remember the paralysis of business-driven art well enough that you will never feel it again. Keep the separation between earning and creation sacred. Art is free. Strike. I don't have anything else to say. <laughs> um, I will go ahead and share a scan of this, uh, of the whole thing, 
and as well as a text version in the description box below. And I am feeling much better and much freer and, um, and generally more, uh, in line with my, with my values. Uh, this is what I want my approach to art to be and to feel like. Um, and I recognize that that is inherently anti-capitalist and I need this as a, as a way of, um, giving me strength to, uh, live in line with my beliefs and not in line with the values of capitalism. I hope that this has inspired you somewhat to evaluate your relationship with art and with creation and with sharing. And I, um, I promise that from today forward, I'm going to do my best to live in line with my true values. Thank you for watching.